all right guys how are you all doing i'm fiesta here and today we have some interesting things let's look into it firstly we have igor slav have introduced amd and axi amd fsr and axi ss with the frame generation that's right the fsr 310 emulated and of course the axi ss probably also emulated uh have been provided here and he also got the performance and if you look into it if you he's using rtx 4090 for this test and FSR Ultra Performance, again, this is a FSR 3.0 emulated, not exactly the official FSR 3.0. So, he's getting 135.6 average FPS compared and uh, one person low is 121.5. For XCSS performance, if we look into it, it's 135. And for DLSS Ultra Performance, it's also 134.5. So, basically, a uh, very similar performance if you look into it. So, it seems like the frame generation is working for even for FSR 2.0 here, which is an emulated FSR 3.0, you could you could say. And the same goes to XCSS. They are literally giving the same kind of performance. If you look into the performance mode, 134.5, 134.2, 2, and 134 similar, very much similar. Again, this is X, uh, DLSS balanced and DLSS performance. Looks very similar. Uh, XCS is balanced also getting 133.9 and FSR balance getting 133.4 and XCS's quality is getting 133.4 versus DLSS quality is getting 132.8 but FSR quality is getting a bit lower which is 127.8 maybe it's lagging behind and the native was obviously 124.9 so yeah it seems like the frame generation will also work with FSR and XCSS, and it seems like AMD's FSR 3.0 release will support frame generation similar to DLSS 3.0. So, competition is going to be really interesting there. Next up, we have Intel Core i7 13700HX Raptor Lake CPU that is uh, probably the mobile series it's getting leaked here, or basically in the Geekbench score we were getting, and it's going to be featuring 16 core. Then 24 threads if you look into it right here. The base frequency will be 2.1 and the max would be 49.66 gigahertz. So that's good. It's going to be good performance, I guess. And if you look into some, perf uh, well, the Geekbench score, you could say it's a performance, but not really. But yeah, it's just a Geekbench synthetic benchmark here. We are getting single core score of 1866 and a multi core of 15,181. So. Let's look into some comparison here, and if you look into it right here, compared to the 3900HX, it's around like 10% slower, which is not bad, really, not bad. And But in multi-core, it kind of lags behind compared to the 3900HX, the i9, of course, uh, it's around 25%. So in multi-core, it's kind of is bad, but in single-core, not, not too much. But then again, it's a one tier drop i7 model we're talking about so kind of makes sense and next up we have momomo underscore us providing an information about the asus 79 or 17900 uh, series of gpus i don't know why i'm struggling with spelling that but if you look into it this is the information that he's providing this is uh i don't know what that is looks like russian but then again Let's look into some models here, and if you look into it, we have the dual series of RTX 3060 Ti, of course, those are the NVIDIA cards. But looking down, right here, we're seeing the ROG Strix 7900 XTX model. So yeah, Asus is going to be preparing a lot of cards for the C, and there's plenty of it. 7900 XTX, again, that's the ROG Strix, that's a non-overclock model, there's tough series of uh, 7900 XTX. And same goes to other models here. And we also got the 17900 XT models right here, the Tough and the ROG Strix. So yeah, there are plenty of models coming from the uh, AMD 4 or 4 AMD coming from uh, Asus here, which again, expected, right? But I believe the pricing won't be as expected knowing Asus, of course, because they always put a very premium pricing. I don't know why, but they do that all the time. Same, uh, it will we will be seeing the same thing for AMD here from Asus, of course. So, yeah, you should get excited, but also for the pricing, I 
don't really think that's gonna be exciting. And next up, we have Galax claiming a multiple amount of world records with their, of course, the RTX 4090 Hall of Fame. And these are the listing for their world records here. And they got the 3 Mark Port Royal of 31,622, which is again the highest score you can find now. And in Time Spy, we're getting 41,926. In Times by Graphics Score, we're getting 44,293. In Times by Extreme, again, Graphics Score, we're getting 23,229. Pretty much love and Extreme, we have, uh, again, a lot of performance numbers here. Fire Strike getting 74,725. And Fire Strike Extreme, of course, is going to be Extreme, so the score will be a little bit lower. It's going to be 50,941. And, of course, the Ultra of that is 30,612. We also got Superposition, Catzilla, Un Unigen, Unigen Extreme. Of course, there's plenty of benchmarks or synthetic benchmarks, I have to say. And they literally have 20 world records, which is, again, very impressive. Even though it's not realistic because, you know, who's going to perform a used li liquid nitrogen here? So, yeah, I guess they can break world records and world records are meant to be broken, I guess. Next up, we got Yeston, that's probably a Chinese-based company, making their first RTX 4090 enthusiast uh, GPU here. And if you look into it, this is a probably, the, the team is here is, uh, I don't know, it's Cyberpunk? or I shouldn't say Cyberpunk. Or rather, it's Steampunk, I should say. I just Googled it and it, sell, it told me that it's a Steampunk. Uh, yeah. That's the team here, and uh, honestly, like it, it's 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 really nice looking card. Like, I like the like. Look at the pipes here. I, even though they're just aesthetics, but they look nice. So yeah, the steampunk model for the Yeston, or they they don't really tell it's a steampunk model. They just say it's a team. So I'm liking the vibe here, honestly. Like, it's beefy, not too much beefy, but it's, it's big, and I like the aesthetics. That's a black gunmetal. Is it gunmetal? I could be wrong. But yeah, whatever that is, I like the aesthetics. So yeah, that's a Yiston RTX 4090. Very interesting to look at. And very beautiful too. And lastly, we have more threads. The MTT S80 GPU. That's the, again, a Chinese-based GPU. I don't know what company that is, but... They're making their own GPU here, literally, not NVIDIA or AMD, it's literally their own GPU here. And if you look into some pictures, they, I mean, it looks generic, nothing, I mean, a little bit of aesthetics, I can see that. But that's not the, that's not the, the, the question here. The question is, they're making their own GPU, which is, again, interesting. And it's completely in Chinese, so I don't understand, so I'm going to look into the video card article here. And this is it. They have more information, and if you look into it, it mentions here that it ships with 16 gigs of 24. Oh shit! Uh, sorry about that. 16 gigs of G6 memory, 14 GBPS memory speed, obviously, and it also comes with this 1.4 and HDMI 2.1. Well, I really like the HDMI 2.1, but it doesn't come with DisplayPort 2.1. Uh, 2.1? I don't know. May yeah, probably 2.1. I don't know. But yeah, it does, it does support 2.1, which is good. But DisplayPort getting their 2.0. I, oh yeah, it was 2.0. Sorry about that. So DisplayPort 2.0 is now it should be necessary. Which again, Nvidia is also missing out. But then again, that's not a prob uh, question here. We're looking into the MTT S20. And it's coming at 2,999 uh, yen, I believe, as their currency. Or am I wrong? I don't know. But yeah. Basically, this is, this, you can't just get that GPU. You also need the motherboard, I believe. Yeah, it's just uh, you can't buy it without a mother motherboard. So yeah, you need the motherboard that comes with this GPU. So it's gonna it's, it's not a real pricing for the GPU. It's just a you know combined pricing. But I guess the real pricing right here is that M80 GPU is around uh nineteen seventy, which is two seventy six USD. It's fairly cheap. Com uh, we don't know the performance though, but yeah, fairly cheap. But it does mention 8K HD, which is very weird. Will it perform 8K? I, I highly doubt it. I really doubt it. But yeah, 
Uh, this is the, probably the third GPU competitor. I, I wouldn't really say competitor because it's their first gaming card, you know. Also comes with PCI Gen 5, so yeah, I mean, it's your first. We can't really com complain or even c comment on it because we don't know what how it performs. So yeah, we have to wait, I guess. Or we don't even know it's going to come into the market. So yeah, that's also another question. I mean, it's in China, but not in the world. So that's the point to keep in mind. Alright, that is it for today. What do you think about AMD FSR and XCS is getting frame generation? Well, it, it's expected, I guess, because, you know, like, DLSS 3.0 getting frame generation. I mean, I mean, will AMD and XCS just, or even Intel, just, you know, stay back and relax and think, yeah, we're just going to be okay without that? Oh, obviously not. They're going to also add frame generation. So, yeah, it's got, the competition is getting tight. Alright, that is it for today. Hopefully you enjoy it and have a good day. And of course, subscribe, like, share and comment below for what you think. See you later.